I've been collecting trains since I was a little boy, probably about seven years old. I got my first uh, Bachman train set. And for about 45 years, I've been collecting trains here and there. And this right here is a, a Christmas layout that I'm starting to work on. I'm going to put some mountains and things on it, but this is uh, the bare basics that I've got. Uh, the first thing I want to unbox today is a Kato F7 freight train set. And this is a blue bonnet. And it's one of my favorite designs, the F7. So on the back of the box, it shows you how to put the brake wheels on, uh, put the chimney on the caboose, and optional interior lighting that you can purchase. It shows you how to use the magnetic trip pins and the coupler contents. And now if you look at the way that the, the train is set up here with the tank car, number one, I'm, I'm pretty sure, and those of you who are more familiar with trains in the real world can chime in, but I'm pretty sure there has to be at least one car between the locomotive and a tank car. So it, this is probably not right, but chime in if you, if you do know the difference. And down here it shows you, this is the track that I bought here. And so this is the outer loop. And then here's the passing siding I have, but the tracks don't, they don't have enough room. A two by four, that's not gonna fit. And then you've got your inner loop here, but there's tons of things that you can buy. And uh, they're just, they've done a fantastic job with their micro trains. I've got a Kato Unitrack that came with an F7 set that I bought. And then I bought a passing siding, but there wasn't enough room for the, for the passing siding to run through here. So I just ended up making a little yard. And one of the things I like about the Kato is that the frogs aren't powered. So what happens is if you throw the switch to a different track other than the one it's sitting on, this track becomes de-energized. So it really makes it easy to park trains. Now this is an N scale set this is two by four so this train right here it does have a long tank car on it so i'm not sure how that's going to work but we're going to go ahead and unbox this we'll pull up the the f7 here first so this is a blue bonnet and i do like the kato a lot the knuckle couplers are are really nice the detailing is really precision so with kato they have all these pieces and parts that just go onto the side of the transformer so this right here is a controller that's going to run the signal. They're color coded so the clear goes clear and green green. I just think the quality of these is much higher than the Bachmans. The Bachmans are fine. I've got a lot of Bachmans and people will complain about them. People will complain about the easy track. I, I find that you know they all work pretty well. So if you're just buying some of these starter sets some of them will come with track and some won't. So the thing about Kato is you can buy just the train set with the locomotive and cars and then Kato has a whole line of of different tracks that you can buy. Uh, there's the inner and the outer loop. There's passing sidings, freight yards. There's so many things. And it's all really detailed and user-friendly as far as like connecting those together. They've done a, a fantastic job. The boxing, all of it is just phenomenal. When you buy a Kato set that has the train track and everything, they send you this little railer and you can buy a Bachman one as well. And what this does is it just sits on the rails and you put your train car on it and it rolls right on. And it's a little difficult to do this on a curve, but putting these, these train cars on, it's not super hard. You can actually just feel it with your fingers in there. But I do know that they have to have at least one or two cars between the engine and a tank car. So this set comes with, with two of these covered hoppers. So this is a tank car, a UTLX. And I'm gonna say these are probably 40 scale feet and this is probably 50. So it is, it's a pretty good sized car. A lot of people, when they build their layouts, they make the passing siding on the curves. And I've never in real life seen a passing siding on a curve. They've always been on a straightaway. And what a passing siding does is it allows you to decouple the locomotive from the cars and you can change the head end. So you can be on this end with the train and then you just flip around, go through the passing siding and now you're on this end. And that's great for switching or a lot of times you know, the train doesn't have a turntable or a Y to turn around, so they use a passing siding. And a lot of these times you'll see the trains, they have an A unit and a B unit. Well, the B unit is just a, a non-cab powered locomotive. And they had a control on the B unit so they could run them around the train yard, but they, they weren't used by themselves to haul train cars. Now you don't see caboose as much anymore, and that's all because, well, railroads are cheap. And with all the uh, electronics they've got now, they don't need to run cabooses. 
and it looks funny without a caboose, I think, uh, but they use these threads at the end. I've got some extra pieces and parts here. These are the brake wheels that came with it. Um, there's some little mu couplers and some other parts. I'm going to take this train out for a spin. All right, so these two right here are my switches. Here's your throttle and here is your off forward and reverse. So we're going to make sure that the throttle's down. We'll put this in forward and we'll give it a go. Now I want to show you something really cool, which is this signal. It's automatic. Now watch, it'll change back. It goes to orange and now green. And now when I go the other way, so the throttle here and then go to forward. So Kato is a Japanese company and they primarily build a lot of the trains that you would see in Japan like the Shinkansen and uh, a lot of those bullet trains and they have a lot of interesting things. The buildings, they don't really have a great selection of buildings. They have a couple of stations uh, but nothing that really would fit into like a Christmas scene. So they're really super ultra modern, uh, their, their structures, but they do a really good job with locomotives. The detailing is excellent. Uh, this has a black roof and you can see the numbers are all molded. Like if I had a magnifying glass, I could actually pick these cars up and read all the letters on them. Nothing is blurred. The track is phenomenal. The controllers, the electronics, you know, the Japanese are just really well known for, for fine electronics and this is no exception. So this Kato F7 freight train, blue bonnet, five car set. I think it's a great buy. I think it's a great little train, and I really, I really have nothing but high regard for this train. So we've unboxed it. This is brand new out of the box, and uh, if you have any questions, please put them down below. But uh, welcome to Tommy's Trains. This will be one of the, my playlists, and we'll still be doing tractors and the farm animals and everything else. But over the winter, I'm gonna go through some of my trains. So thanks for watching, and stay tuned for my next video, which we're gonna go over this unboxing of this Bachman set I picked up at Hobby Lobby and it's the Yard Boss. So thanks for watching and I'll talk to you next time. So if you haven't already please hit the like button, uh, subscribe if you would, and give me a comment down below about what you think about toy trains or model railroading. Thanks for watching and I'll, I'll see you next time.